Welcome back, Canaanites, for another monthly recap. Let's dive right in, starting with In Case You Missed It. September saw the release of three videos. First was one looking at the latest cannon fodder article, revealing information on a new enemy in armor. Next, we had a look at Halo 3 ODST in preparation for its release on MCC on PC. And finally, there came a guide and lore discussion of Sadie's story, the collectible audio logs from Halo 3 ODST. As always, the videos are linked in the description box below. Next up, we have official news and releases, which was light in terms of quantity, but great in terms of content. The month started with the announcement of some Halo Infinite Funko figures going up for pre-order. Next, on September 10th, we had the reveal of some awesome Halo bags in partnership with Hex. I don't know about you, but I'm loving what I'm seeing. On September 16th, an interview with producer Erica Martinez was posted to 343industries.com. Going over Erica's role at the company, it is, as always, a great look at what goes on behind the scenes for shepherding and developing a franchise like Halo, especially in our current environment. Sadly, some really toxic trash emerged from the woodwork because of this, but I was very happy to see that there were far more supportive voices than detractive ones. On September 17th, 343 Industries announced a Halo 5 Pro Series and MCC competition. On the 22nd, ODST, of course, made its debut on PC, and damn, was it great. Even more exciting was the addition of Firefly to all versions of MCC. As discussed last month, MCC's version of ODST Firefight includes matchmaking akin to Halo Reach's Firefight offerings, along with a ton of customization options that weren't present in classic ODST. The release also brought with it Season 3 of MCC, with new rewards to unlock, including special models of Firefight characters previously only seen during campaign, such as Wounded Romeo or Bug Covered Buck. We also got enhanced customization for Halo 2 Anniversary multiplayer, among so much more. Later that same day too, 343 had a live stream showing off all the new features that came with this latest update. The very next day, 343 released a cosplay guide for the Rookie. This guide has dozens of renders of the Rookie's ODST gear, with tons of detail for materials and color palettes for each piece, including some cool canon details for lore nerds like myself. This 75-page document is a labor of love to the cosplay community, and the release included an interview with Quinn Spence, Kenneth Peters, and Zara Varen, who all contributed to this cosplay guide. Thank you to these folks that helped put this together. I sincerely hope we get to see more stuff like this done in the future. It is so damn cool on so many levels. Moving on, the Dark Horse Halo Infinite Collector statue was revealed on September 24th, with pre-orders available now. On September 28th, we got the Oni Archives video for ODST, which again included some cryptic audio which we'll be talking about in the near future. And of course, wrapping up the month is the usual MCC development update. This update starts with a recap of the ODST release before diving into what we can expect in the future. Among topics discussed are the addition of new skulls to ODST campaign and firefight, such as Acrophobia, the addition of some cut Halo Reach armors, including the legendary GRD, adding more UNSC chest pieces with the mechanical arm, and big features such as custom games browser, input-based matchmaking, and crossplay. We get a preview of the customs browser and its features, which are notably similar to the options offered by the match composer right now. As for crossplay and input-based matchmaking, these are features that 343 sees as inherently tied together, understandably, and are expected to premiere in the next flight. The article goes on to dive into some of the features expected for that next flight and the eventual update to MCC, including region selection and enhancing Halo 4's Forge mode in much the same way they did with Halo 3 and Reach prior. What really stands out in this last section, though, is 343 addressing why it simply can't add all Forge items to every map, something which not everyone may understand. In short, each Forge item has to be baked into each map, increasing the overall file size of the map and thus the game. Hopefully 343 can figure something out to make more items available in more places, but if not, it's an understandable limitation of old technology. From there, we get a good look at flighting goals for Halo 4 and a preview of the content to be expected. There's, of course, customization, forge, theater, challenges, and Season 4 content, on top of what we previously discussed, and the standard new PC features and multiplayer offerings. So far, though, Campaign and Spartan Ops offerings are unknown, though I'm personally hoping that the content of the Champions Bundle will become available in Halo 4 multiplayer and, more importantly, Spartan Ops. 
These would include the added armor mods and armors like Prefect and Mark V, which were available in Halo 4's Xbox 360 matchmaking and custom games, but never available in Spartan Ops. Fingers crossed. The update closes with its usual state of the game section, going over a number of community requested features and where they are in development. And I think that wraps it for official news for September, right? Yeah, probably. And with that, we come to community shoutouts. Starting things out is a shout out to a new subreddit I've been enjoying as of late, our shitty Halo lore, which is exactly what it sounds like. Ever wonder why the winter contingency was declared in summer, or what the Didact was up to for 100,000 years? This is the only place to know it all. Next up, we have a general shout out for Tubby Central, who has made a series of absolutely adorable Tubby caricatures of characters from Halo and other series. They're incredibly well drawn and cute as hell. Check out Tubby Central on Instagram. Next, we have the absolute mad lad Steve Witt, who spent years building a massive Paris-class frigate out of Legos. Check out his Flickr account to see it in all its glory. After that, we have a Halo-themed cover of Old Country Road by Krillcast and Vroom. It's pretty well done, so be sure to check it out on YouTube and subscribe to both channels. Next, we have this nice homage to Halo Infinite using Minecraft by Little Thomas on Twitter. Check him out. After that, we have a fantastic piece of Cortana that really evokes that 90s era anime look, and I just love it. Check out the artist Crossy on Twitter. Next up, a little British cosplay from our neighbors across the pond. There's not much else to say, really, other than check out the creator, British Halo, on Twitter. Next up, we have a very humorous video from Lady Red Cosplay, simply a Spartan driving a golf cart. We basically have golf in the game already, so why not go the extra step, 343? Be sure to check out the video on Twitter. Following that is a small animation test by Red Imperialist, but for its brevity, it's really damn good. I can't wait to see more. Check out Red Imperialist on Twitter. After that, we have this wonderful piece by Spartan0398 titled Master Chief Collection. I needn't say more, I think. Check out the artist on Twitter. Next up is a proposed leader edition to Halo Wars 2, George 052 by Mr. Gruntington. Though brief, I love his ideas for how George might play. I'd love if 343 could go back and support Halo Wars 2 with more leaders someday, assuming we never get a Halo Wars 3. Check out Mr. Gruntington on Twitter. Next up is something really special. Over the last month and more, Modder Rejected Shotgun has been recreating the Halo 3 Guardian in the game now that Halo 3 is on PC, and damn is it awesome. It's even gotten some praise from former Bungie staff. You can see more of his work on Twitter and some of Rejected Shotgun's amazing mods on YouTube. Next up we have a fantastic retrospective on Halo 3 by Same Token, who makes a ton of great Halo content. In addition to his own thoughts, the video features a number of nostalgic testimonials from YouTubers and content creators, including yours truly. <clears throat> Check out the video and give Same Token a subscription. After that, we have this amazing spray painting of Installation 04 by Dog and Sleep. You can check out the final product on Reddit and see the process that went into the creation of the piece on his YouTube channel. Be sure to check it out. Next, we have a cool speed painting video by Caddy Demons of Jega Urdomnai. Jega is such a cool character, and I love how much love he's been getting in the community. Caddy does a great painting, which you can see created on her YouTube channel. Check it out, and consider checking out her other social media. Following that is a great piece of 3D art by Nick Proctor. It features the Chief being confronted by Eshram in a manner reminiscent of Halo 3's John 117 monument. I absolutely love it. Check it out on Twitter. And our penultimate shoutout goes to, and I'm sorry if I butcher this, Dina on Twitter with their elite EVA, a Sanghili Evangelion, and damn does it look great. Wrapping things up is, of course, the Halo community spotlights for September, of which we got two. As always, they're filled to the brim with amazing works of all kinds. Be sure to check out the spotlights, along with the creations that we've discussed here today. Everything, as always, is linked in the description box below. And that wraps up this rather brief September recap. Be sure to check out the artists and news we've discussed here, and leave your thoughts in the comments below. Look forward to October, as it's going to be a hell of a month.
Until then, this has been Halo Canon. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider subscribing and if you really love me, hit that notification bell and leave a thumbs up. These both really help out the channel. I wouldn't be where I am now without your views and support, so once again, thank you. Keep on being awesome, Canonites.